Hey folks, it's Maxi here. Welcome to another TW 2020 video. You join us today for the final uh, episode of 1983 before we head on to 1984. So it's good to know we've went through a year of this particular save. As I say, it is one I want to try to get to quite a ridiculous amount of time in the future. To aid that, I have changed one thing. I've ditched B-shows. They were not really doing anything for me. Uh, it was just wasting time. So that's gone. So it's just four A shows a month and obviously an end of show event. And, and hopefully we can use that to yeah keep getting good ratings, keep gaining pop, and then hopefully stretch into two hours, getting people in written contracts, and then eventually going on pay-per-view. So a quick bit to cover. We'll cover the, the show today and we'll also cover the PWI 500, the rest of the year awards, etc. Before we count into that, please as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Also check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv, one max So I am doing a WWE save, modern day, that and NXT. And yeah, I've been doing that nearly daily, as close to daily as I can get whilst we're still in lockdown. But that will continue most evenings and at the weekends once everything's back to normal. The side of the woods. So... Yeah, and of course, usual description for all mods, some more places to watch some written and verbal content, and yeah, let's get this show on the road. So we're missing a few people for this one. Andre, Hogan, Heenan, I had a follow with Ivan Kolov, Neil Mascaris is also missing, and Tommy Rich as well. Of course, we need to be bigger, so then these become our priority, and they will not go to all Japan, or New Japan or All Japan. But again, we're not quite in a financial or even big enough position to get them on written deals. Backstage incidents, we're always getting a bit six a show still, so uh, I tend to do them before the video. Few people are unhappy, that's just the way it is, really. Uh, we are 0% backstage. I have given a lot of people a bit of money to try and make them happier. That's why our performance is as low as it is, but it's just kind of, yeah, not helped too much. Apart from people that are in big morale issues, Bar Baron, Mikhail, I can't pronounce that uh, surname. But again, I think he's like a road agent, so it doesn't really matter. But we're still in a good position. We're still, as I say, on the road to the next side, which is big. I say it's just getting the usual, the likes of the southeast and the various other regions we need here. Close to 70s, then we'll go that big push to get to 77. Uh, the show itself, usual places, we're going to be broadcasting, sorry, that's going to be the MSG Network, Telemundo in Puerto Rico, and the South East TV Local, of course, our normal shows do showcase everywhere, but the South East was just a case of, yeah, let's get that catching up with everyone else. And we're at the Baltimore Stadium, roughly should be an attendance of 45,000, Andrea is on the card, so that should be the case. And we should get close, hopefully, to that 50,000 sellout. There's your card. A few rematches here, but it is just kind of with the mindset of we're at the end of the year, finish the feuds, and then go on from here. I'll reveal one thing I do want to do going into the new year. So we start off. Snooker's promo on Bundy, and that was just a 56, as they will have their feud ending match here. And it saw Bundy defeat him. Jimmy Superfly Snooker and a match had great heat and good wrestling in 12.21 with a big splash. So a 64 here, I had to protect Snooker, but I felt like it was a good opportunity to get King Kong Bundy a bit further over. And overall, I'm happy with that for an opener. It was always going to have a bit of a hit because of having to protect Jimmy Snooker. But yeah, just a, a few negatives there, as you would expect. Next up with the Tag Team Championships on the line in a match that had good heat. In decent wrestling, the Road Warriors defeated Tiger Chung Lee and Tiger Conway Jr. in 12-18 when Road Warrior Animal pinned Tiger Chung Lee with a power bomb. This was the seventh defense of the tag titles for the Road Warriors. Probably just victims of a lack of depth in the tag division, which is understandable not wanting to go with too big a roster at this time. But eventually, as I say, we'll maybe even let them reign supreme for a good period of time before other teams come in and we can make it a highly competitive division. But it's a 50 rating. Animals to send the damage heal, which is obviously going to knock a bit of the, uh, the rating a wee bit. I've noticed that the injuries are probably taking a good 70 uh, rating off the angle, plus lack of associated storyline. 
is going to see that drop quite considerably. So that probably was maybe in, I'd say, mid mid sixties. The two pretty big penalties there. Thanks, Peter Mavia. And Tiger Chun Lee was the one who made the mistake. Next up, we had some six-man tag action. About the had great heat and good wrestling, the team of Larry Zabisco, Jake Roberts and Dr. David Schultz defeated Hector Guerrero, Eddie Gilbert and Jim Duggan in 11.44 when Jake pinned Hector Guerrero. Just make my heels look strong because we can't just have the likes of Hogan being great, Andre being great and um, also you know our champion Kurt Henning being great. We do need some heels up there and pairing them with Larry Zabisco I'm hoping they can elevate Roberts and Schultz. You can see in terms of in-ring stuff, the heels were a wee bit over there. Uh, the real, real weak link here was Eddie Gilbert and Hector Guerrero. I think Eddie's kind of suffering from the fact, you know, that um, Bob Eaton left pretty quickly when that was uh, the idea of a tag team there. So that is what it is. But as I say, we've got a build going into 1984. Probo from Gino Hernandez as he's going to be taking on the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and that is a 73. Impromptu match, but I just feel like Gino needs a big name in the IC matchups. That's not ideal. It had fantastic heat and good wrestling, and Gino Hernandez defeated Dusty Rhodes in 1331 using a foreign object. Gino's 11th defence of the tag of the IC title. Only a 56, so unfortunately both guys didn't click, which is going to take a lot off the rating. And it was put as 14 minutes just so it didn't lose too much but again this associated story will be a factor here but there's that way I don't want to have too many feuds going together at the start and then again in 1985 and I'm like oh he's faced him and he's faced him so and of course sometimes you just don't know who it wrestlers are going to be available so it can ruin plans as well because uh may as well reveal it I was going to ha hopefully go with Andre turning and Hogan and try and build that the whole in 1984 but uh, yeah, I might just delay that because I think Andre versus Hogan deserves to be a WrestleMania 1 match, which again is 15 months away. So after it, they have a heated confrontation, just a 62. We really need to be drawing 70s here, so this needs to really draw this main event. Kurt Herring, the champion, the leader of the current generation of WWF Superstar, gets a 72 as he takes on Bob Backlund. Thankfully, though, the main event does deliver. This will be their last encounter, Backlund's last chance. And it was about to hit fantastic heat and great wrestling. Kurt Henning defeats Bob Backlund in 21 21 with the Henning Plex. So it's his second defence, an 82, 79 for Henning, 75 for Bob Backlund. But uh, yeah, we firmly established that this man is the face of the World Wrestling Federation, which could have been Hulk Hogan. But he obviously had that injury, so had to be protected. A 77 means it's just pop gains in Puerto Rico and the southeast. We don't gain in the tri-state. So we are going to have to be looking, honestly, at maybe 80s consistently across the board if we are wanting, to, when we get to like 72, 73, just to ensure that we can get to a large size. So we'll jump back to the main screen. We'll check our finances briefly before we then move on to the big... PWI 500. I don't expect to take most improved company. It'd be nice, but I really don't anticipate we'll get it. Let's just have a look here. Always just in case there's stuff that affects us, which would not be ideal. Let's see, where are we? WWF. A lot of praise. That's good to see. Road Warrior Animal. Just going to be out for a few days. That's not too bad. And we got a 0 0.20 TV rating. So that's fine. So it's obviously not in a position to go with pay-per-view finance so seven million that's going to drop massively we are in the month tax and miscellaneous so don't be surprised if we might even make a loss because of the money we to give certain superstars but pretty similar on ticket sales broadcast revenues up a little sponsorships will gain merchandise may possibly gain as well so that's cool who's going to win the pw500 Let's find out. So, let's find out how all the words have went down. Let's pronounce these horribly wrong as well when it's a lot of Japanese uh, wrestlers that win. But Jirichiro Tenru is your wrestler of the year. He wins the PWI 500. 
your company of the year is New Japan, so they had a great 1983, so well done to them. The team of the year was Antonio and OK and Tatsumo Fujinami. The match of the year was between Tenru and Bruiser Body, Brody even sorry, and yeah, that was for all Japan. So you get the, the kind of gist here, it's going to be mostly the uh, Japanese companies that will be taking the awards. Show of the year went to CWF, the Canadian Wrestling Federation, for their February show. Young Wrestler of the Year went to Akira Maeda. The Veteran Wrestler of the Year went to Giant Baba. The Female Wrestler of the Year went to Lioness Asuka. The Most Improved Company went to the Calgary Stampede Wrestling. Independent Wrestle of the Year went to Tenru as well, well, obviously most of them are at that kind of level. Manager of the Year went to Paul Ellering, so maybe we should bring him in and have him with the Road Warriors a lot quicker. Announcer of the Year went to Lance Russell. Colour Commentator of the Year went to the Grand Wizard. And the Referee of the Year went to Kyohei Wada. So yeah, we are not in anything so far, but that's cool. What I want to check is where our uh, wrestlers actually pop up. So in terms of people that have wrestled for us, Stan Hansen was P4 obviously. A lot of that is going to be when he was with All Japan. So a lot of these will be All Japan. I don't know if I can just kind of... There we go. That, that, there we go. That is exactly what we want, that fella. So in terms of people that work for us just now, there we go. We've actually got a clean way of looking at it now. That's a brilliant feature. If that was in last year's, my bad, 2016, my bad. But anyway, Dusty Rhodes are at P7, Andre the Giant in at 13, Jimmy Snooker at 17, Dom Rocco at 19, Gino Hernandez at 36, Tommy Rich in at number 60. We can see a lot of these guys have kind of obviously wrestled elsewhere, so that's how they've went a bit higher. Uh, is that not going to let me scroll down one by one? Unfortunately not, I'm going to have to click. Mel Mascaris at 72, Jim Duggan at 76, Jake Snake at 80. Uh, Hector Guerrero 83, Larry Zabisco 87, his injury has meant Hulk Hogan down at 92, he did wrestle 198 matches and if we can just click on Hulk, so that record there, 95 wins and 103 losses. Forty-two wins, zero losses with the World Wrestling Federation, so yeah. Everyone else is trying to ruin our superstar. Typical. The sooner we get him on that written exclusive, the better. Uh, 108, Kurt Herring. But as I say, we will hopefully get him on our written exclusive eventually. Uh, he is loyal to AWA in this, but uh, he did sign for WF in real life, so I might just you know edit that and allow that to happen. Uh, Bob Backlund at 125, David Schultz at 143, Tiger Conway at 152. I think the worrying part is you can see the highest and lowest ratings on the screen. Most of them have WWF All-Star Wrestling as a lowest. Uh, AFA in there as well at 171. Ivan Kolov at 182. We have Sika at 196. Eddie Gilbert at 198. Tito Santana at 215. Road Warrior Animal at 219. Hawk at 225. Putski at 231. King Kong Bundy at 280. Special Delivery Jones at 403. Rene Goulet at 410. Tony Gray at 4.13 and Chief Chase Strongbow at 4.89 with Tiger Chung Lee finishing up at 4.90. So quite a few in the top 100, one in the top 10, three in, uh, four in the top 20. But let's be honest, it's mostly because of their exploits with New Japan. So that's up to us over time to take the company forward and get in a position where we can get, as I say, exclusive wrestlers working for us and putting on solid shows all the time. I just want to finish up with two things and that's just to confirm our size stance at the moment. So we need Great Lakes to get to 77, that's at 72. The, sorry, Great Lakes is 60, that's it, to get to 77. Mid-Atlantic, likewise. New England's at 67, so that's in a good position. Southeast is at 45, which is a long way to go, that's why we've got the extra deal going on there. And the Tri-State, 72, so that is telling us we're in the right direction we're going to have to start running the southeast and getting that over. But these are starting to get closer 
to the Tri-State. And of course to finish up, 687,000 profit. I'm quite content with that because as I said earlier, we did give a lot more to the wrestlers to kind of keep them happy. Although our miscellaneous and our tax was down both for the month there in our media. Well, actually, that puts us in a much better position as well because we paid the big money to cancel the B show as well. So that's another 900 grand we could have had. So we could be making easily 1.5. Although I, I do think that the extra cost to media is probably why the miscellaneous and the tax are not as high. But hey, we've got 6.3 million dollars in the bank. We certainly are funded now, one of the better companies in the world. So hopefully we can start to attack other companies and become the number one. We're still 8th in the world, as I say, our size just has to get us there. But, yeah, as I say, we're a year and a couple of months off WrestleMania 1. That's the one I found keeping realistic. Hopefully we can get to pay-per-view by then, because, um, if we can go to the right thing. Broadcasting, yes, that is what I would like, all broadcasters. And of course, you need to remember as well that I just need to check is there actually any pay per view providers in this mod? Well, there is. Oh! Open to talking to WWF. Should we jump in with cable vision and go one year earlier? Do you know what? I think we just might. WrestleMania, 1984. Let's start a year earlier. I'll think about it. I don't know. I will have decided by the time the next episode, because it's, it's one of those ones on the fly, what do I do? Well, I'll put it this way. Stay tuned. So it's just for watching, much appreciated. As I say, remember and check out their content on the channel. I've got plenty of stuff coming forward. I've got AWC, where it's all angles are written out. There's going to be the WWE save that's on Twitch, but I'm also rounding it up on here because that was a big thing last year. And as I say, I always like doing a long term WWE, of course, and NXT save as well. This will be carrying on as long as the mod doesn't break on me. And because of uh, participating in the F1 uh, league I do with the VFL, I get a lot of time to do some Sims now. So we'll have Sim episodes every so often. Uh, as I say, prior to this coming out, we've already I've already basically got the information I need for. One on killing the business, there should be a second one coming out on killing the business by the time this goes live. And I've also been working on the one for the 1991 mod, the name of it off the top of my head, I can't remember. But that's just at the time of recording. There's still, some may be out there, some may not. But uh, yeah, there'll be a lot more to come on that front. So cheers for watching, much appreciated. Take it easy, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.